Okay, Simon said say. Push. Number 10. Come on. Come on. Come on. Push. Push. But here we go again. There we go Today again. I'm thinking cider. Berry, berry and lime fragrance. Berry and lime cider. <laughs> You're so avant-garde. I am. I'm cutting edge. I'm an old idiot. <laughs> I'm an old. And, uh, I'm still on this uh, this low alcohol stuff. Well, that one. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I'm not surprised uh, you're making that last. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's actually it's actually really nice. And, yeah, good. Uh, and it's I mean, obviously not a Jai January then because it's like just short two percent. But you know, it's a it's a drunk free January. Let's put it that way. There you go. That's good. Yeah. I'm not Virginia. <laughs> so today we have come up with this cunning idea, haven't we, of to talk and this will initially talk about the need you cut. Yes. Uh, because I think I think frankly, our last couple of discussions have had very little karate. The only karate that we've managed is to crowbar stuff into talking about, I don't know, philosophy or what were we talking about? Oh, Robin Williams last week or <laughs> so yes. so the one that is exclusively karate might be a good idea. Yes, I agree. We've got I'll no try to slip in a bit of being and nothingness in at some stage. <laughs> We've got to remember our target market. And that is <laughs> yeah. people. all people who watch it every time. Yeah, yeah. And the one yeah. person who hates it. Yeah. So uh, are you going to kick us off then with the first one? Well, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've got my books out, which has been a, a, very, a, you know, a reliable pleasure is to get yeah. my books out. And, uh, oh, you know, the person... Well, yeah, just to start off on it, I mean, every, it's, there's, there's a history of, of, of in, in, in martial arts from Kung Fu days of having principles or precepts. Mm. So there's, you know, Funakoshi's need to uh, uh, 20 principles. I kind of probably felt he had to do it. So his teacher, Itotsu, had 10 principles. Okay. Uh, Chosh and Chiba, uh, of, they, they had principles. Choji Miyagi had principles. Chokimata Buto had principles. So there's like a history of like when you have your, your guru or whatever you want to call it, you sort of, you know, nail your colours to the mast. And the interesting thing about them is they're all remarkably similar, really. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, a, a little bit, a bit like, you know, Bushido stuff. But anyway, so I, 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 I'm, there's different translations, but I'm going to go for this translation here. Is, uh, I mean, which is, I like this, one, which is karate begins and ends with courtesy. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on this? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think one of the things about, um, about the need you could, this might become a theme, is that they're kind of bleedingly obvious, aren't they? The platitudes. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, karate begins and ends with courtesy. Yes, correct. And like, we can read lots of that. Okay, we always bow when we enter the dojo and bow when we leave the dojo. And that's maybe signifies that, like, we're, we are finishing and starting and finishing our karate experience. With, with a bow of Ray, uh, you know, same with uh, when you're doing any sort of kumite, start and finish with a bow. That's kind of reinforced, reinforced, reinforced. But I don't, I don't think that's a particularly kind of Japanese thing. I think it's, uh, you know... Gloves in you boxing, touch gloves in fencing, on guard. Yeah, yeah. Um, or just meeting someone, shake the hand when you meet them, shake the hand when you leave. You know, like, yeah. it's, not, it's, not, it's not rocket science, is it? It's probably if you do a Zumba clash, you probably do a high five to the instructor. Yeah, yeah. Or you do a spin clash, you give everyone a wave before you go. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think that the trouble with this, people get very um, po-faced about it, don't they? Mm. The words of the masters must be treated with great respect. But I still, I still you know, I, I still think it's a good way to start a class. And, you know, and it, it, you know there's a certain, you know, a, a certain friendliness about it and sort of yeah. seriousness about it. Like, here we go, go, let's go, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are, um, I've been in classes where, where, you know, when, the, when people start, if we're doing like lots of Kumite stuff and, um, and even like in, in, in morning training and instructor's training, like, like Ross and Ross and Rue maybe, or Ross and AJ, Rue and AJ, you know, like if we're kind of doing Kumite change, Kumite change, 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 they'll, they'll start with a kind of like, you know, touching, touching fist, knuckle bump type thing. Whereas I'm always like, you know, bow. And it, it does grate a little bit on me, actually. I mean, it grates a lot when, when I've been in a class where, it, you know, it's just everyone's mitted up and they're kind of uh, touching mitts and starting their kumite. Um, yeah. And, and like, because I think the, the Japanese is, 
that it's Ray, isn't it? They use the word Ray like it's specifically to bow rather than that translation being politeness or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So, yeah, for, for me, there is that, it, like, it, with my anthropological head on, then it is about kind of having some sort of physical ceremony that differentiates then and now. That, yeah. that, that, that outside and inside or, or the world and the karate world. And that yeah. is the physical manifestation of that is, is bowing. So, yeah, I think that has importance. But, yeah, uh, I mean, I'd often, sorry, I'd often say the start of a class, you know, the, the, this is what makes us different from, from you know, maybe I'd say like a keep fit class because it's like yeah. a seriousness of intent. But then, you know, we've all been in dojos where karate hasn't begun and ended. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I've been, we've been in dojos where they they certainly tell people to or tell the world that they're all about courtesy and about uh, Zen enlightenment, and then they try to knock your head off. So yeah, yeah. And but I think we bow when we do that. Yeah, but I think also what what I dislike is is not the it's not in the sense that that kind of principle because that's really important, but it's it's the projection of others. Onto that principle that that's that's they're the only people that do that, like the like the Japanese are the only people to have mastered this politeness. Now for sure they've taken it to a the nth degree and they've they've kind of stylized it and, and you know you can't walk into a shop in Japan without them shouting at you, yeah, in a shy say, you know, like you're very welcome kind of thing. But but like also, for example, if you go to parts of Yorkshire, especially South Yorkshire. You know, they'll, they'll use thee and thou. How's thee doing, lad? How's thou doing? Hey, now, yeah, like it's, and, and it's old Shakespearean language. Like, well, it's yeah. not Shakespearean language, but it's, it's language that was around during Shakespeare. And thee is to someone who's junior than you, and thou is to someone who's senior than you. So how's thee doing, lad? Literally is, you're a young lad, how's thee doing? How's yeah. thou doing? You never say, how's thou doing, lad? Because lad implies that they're junior. So thou is someone who's who's a senior, so yeah, and thee is someone who's junior to. So I mean that is you know Shakespearean level, like a old kind of language that has been part of the English British culture literally for hundreds of years. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far to say that Japan is the only place that has this kind of uh, feeling. I think I think it is everywhere. It's just that they've written it down and we we follow it. But I'd say, you know, Funakoshi is running a dojo. It's, it's a great start. It's a bit like Ooh. saying, you know, you, you know, we all walk into the gym and you walk into the gym and that's it. It's just literally giving it like, you know, this is when you enter a dojo, this yeah. is what you do. And, you know, I, and I like that. It sets yeah. your apart from, from going yeah, to yeah. the gym. Yeah. You know, so look at the next one. Okay, yeah. next. Oh, okay. This is a good one. Yeah. Uh, karate needs anti There is no first attack in karate. Yeah. Now you, I've got some notes about this from what other people have said. But okay. You can find them and you can see what you think. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, karate, karate is sente nash. Like, literally, there's no beforehand in karate, right? So there's no there's no first hand in karate, I guess. Um, yeah. And, yeah. So, but I, I, you know, again, people take that to the nth degree and go, oh, that's why old kata start with blocks. Because there's yes. no there's no strike. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I mean, to to what extent that you shouldn't ever strike first? Like, I mean, I don't think anybody nowadays takes it to the degree where you must wait to be attacked before you defend yourself. I mean, obviously, if someone is is verbally attacking you or someone is threatening you, then that is in a sense an attack, and so therefore you have to defend yourself. So I don't think anybody's taking it to that degree but i think there was a time when people used to read this like gospel yes well i mean i, I think uh, you know obviously you haven't watched cobra kai enough because miyagi go they yeah. truly epitomize it well no it's interesting because i looked at uh, ken wama movie by the heart of shitoru contemporary of Funakoshi, and chucky yeah. motobutu both talk about there's no first attack in karate and they say something like to paraphrase what i've written down here as an ordinary citizen of course there'll be no you know, you, you, you'd never be violent towards someone. But if the need arises, it's very important to hit first. 
Chucky Motobruto says this. Oh, really? You know, he said, he said, he said, yeah, therefore, in a fight, it's very important to hit first. Mm. But, you know, so the idea is that, you know, which is, you know, obviously we don't hit people. Chucky Motobuto, who is the famous sort of nemesis of Funakoshi, he was famous. He only knew one kata, Nehanshi, and he was like a, a famous for fighting. And he was famous because he had a fight with a guy called Piston Hosoguchi, who was a boxer. And, and uh, he beat him, Chucky Motobu beat him. And it was famously reported in, in the Japanese newspapers of uh, the winner of the karate experts. But because there was no cameras in that the fight, they drew a picture and they drew a picture of Funakoshi. And I'll post it on Facebook. And Funakoshi is like this, like doing, like <laughs> doing uh, high shoe Muki or something. And there's this big box of like missing it. And Mabuchi, you know, so it was, it was they, they, were, they really didn't like each other. Uh, but, but he said, and again with Mambuni, he was a, a you know, bona fide founder of Shizuru, that in, um, obviously don't hit people, but in a real, in a real situation, it's very important to remember to hit them first. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's, uh, I, I, and I think most people understand that. But I suppose, mm -hmm. you know, um, these, are, these are the kind of rules that people make up for people who don't, who've never been in a fight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it sounds good, but, you know. Yeah. I, I always I, remember I was, Terry O'Neill said to me, so go on, go on. No, I was, I was going to say, like, going back to that kind of, like, um, the, the you know, the gospel, or, you know, it's, it's a good idea until it becomes dogmatic. You know, like yeah. all the guiding principles of, uh, of a, well, I don't want to get too deep, but, like, all the guiding principles of religion are all basically the same until they become dogmatic and and you're, you're not you're not following yeah. the principle you're proving that you're following the principle you're also almost like a virtue virtue signaling where you're proving that you're following those virtues rather than just being virtuous in itself you know uh, what are you going to say about terry now no i was going to say i just remember this i also just for a, just for a laugh looked up the guiding principles of the hell's angels okay uh, one of the hell's angels Globally, one of their pre uh, principles is never back down from a fight. Which is true. You know, never work for the prison service, never back down for a fight, and your vest is sacred. But always, or, 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 always support other Hells Angels. They're the four principles really? of Hells Angels. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's a community. And with any community, you need principles. Yeah. yeah. And that's the purpose. Yeah. All right then. So far, so good. Okay. I hope we haven't, you know, yeah. we need to upset someone soon. Uh, well, th yeah. this is like, um, well, this is karate is an auxiliary to, of justice. Karate wa gi no tasuke. Would you have a different chance? So yeah. Karate well, wa gi of, no tasuke. Yeah. Yeah, to help to help the kind of uh, yeah justice and and honor and uh, yeah. Do you I think, think it's like, you know, sorry. I mean, I mean, again, these are, these are kind of these are principles that were written when in the late eighteen hundreds, early no, early turn of the century. Written, this was written in the nineteen twenties by Fukushima when he was trying. To, yeah, um, yeah. And I'm, just, I'm just trying to think. I'm going to look at Itotsu's ones because Itotsu was his teacher, and mm. he had sort of. Uh, hang on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, 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 he says, number seven, this is a top suit. Funakoshi's teacher. He says, you must decide if karate is for your health or your duty. Which okay. I suppose is a duty yeah. for your country, you know. Because I was, I was going to say, you know, like, like karate is so many things to so many people. The last, yeah. like, and the vast majority of them aren't walking around the streets like a superhero trying to solve problems and stop crime. No, but this is the ideal, isn't it, of it all? You know, and, and also this would have been the beginning of militarism in Japan. Funakoshi was yeah. trying to make it an acceptable art to Japanese people. This was a country bumpkin's art. So I, yeah. I, I, think he, I think maybe he was looking for that box of, you know, be ready to, you know, be a patriot for your nation, to quote modern stuff. So Like jingoistic kind of approach. Yeah, but it does sound a bit, nowadays, it just, it doesn't suit. Let's move on for this next one, yeah? Okay, this is a good one, you know. First know yourself, then know others. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, like, just going back to that, the, the previous one, it probably fits into that as well. I think, you know, if you, if you want to make the world kind of good, then you have to start with yourself, right? And so, yeah. you know, karate, if, if, if you're going to use karate to kind of, you know, uh, kind of subdue the ego, to kind of you know, find yourself, to, to kind of um, make, make yourself kind of more uh, humble, get rid of the ego, stuff like that, then that's going to help society as a whole. So if you want to help society in terms of, like, in terms of justice and stuff like that, then, yeah, of course... Karate is good, and knowing yourself is the start of that, right? So I think I think maybe that 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 the one before and this one now it, oh, is very similar, or can be seen as very similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm just I'm trying to remember the quote now about you know what's about about um, one of the problems of the world is like good, good men and women who stand by and do nothing. Yeah, you know, so, you know that, that classic thing about I think you know I suppose you know you should, as a, as, a, as a citizen of the country as a person you need to step up sometimes. Yeah, and, and and help people. Many years ago in Liverpool, when I was about sixteen, I saw a woman getting mugged. You know, I mean, I was I was eighteen, I was eighteen, and, and I was coming back. I was drunk coming back from a club in Liverpool, in Toxteth it was. And I heard this woman screaming, and I turned around, just looked at this bloke, and ran out and went ah like that. And he looked at me and ran away, which is really good. <laughs> but you know, I but I just thought I couldn't not do anything. Yeah, in fact, yeah. I mean, that after a couple of times that's happened to me really, later that I've stopped things happening, but I just couldn't feel as though I had to, you know, I couldn't walk by. And I'm not yeah. saying that's a crappy thing. I think that's just people. Yeah. You know, you should you should yeah. get involved because you, know, you hear those stories of terrible things happening and no one helping. Don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think like that kind of uh, you know fortitude and kind of self-confidence that karate inevitably develops if done correctly is what you need i mean like you, you gotta say karate didn't you didn't use karate you didn't use karate to uh to help that lady who was being mugged but in essence it was the karate that was within you that gave you the strength to do that right it's amazing act. yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's the act, you know and uh I mean, that's happened a couple of times, really, where I haven't had to fight people, but I've, you know, basically diffused the situation by just having yeah. the courage to do it, really. Yeah, and, I mean, I, possibly I often judge people who do karate as like, would they back me up in a situation or would they act? And that yeah. doesn't, doesn't, really, doesn't depend on their grade or anything. But also, Absolutely. like, you know, if yeah. something happened, you know, like, even if it's someone, I don't know, got hit by a car and needed sort of, you know, to call the police and do CPR yeah. or something, whether they've got something about them. And I, yeah. you know, I always I sort of do this. I want crassy people should have something about them. And it's yeah. not about fighting to the death or something. But if if uh, shit happens, they they'd help out. And yeah. you know, and I, I want I want crassy people to be a cut above. And of course, yeah. they can't be. In my ideal world, they would be. And yeah. to be honest, we know lots of people that you know you can rely on, and that is yeah. you know that's I mean, great. Isn't it? Part of. Um part of my grading criteria when I'm, when I'm doing a grading yeah. is when it comes to kumite, because, uh, you know, you can always, you can always look at technique and some people have like natural timing and natural ability and blah, blah, blah. But like, I always think in a fight, would I rather have them on my side or be against them? You, yeah. you know what I mean? And like, so I look at that like, I, you know, I, I don't think uh, what I'm looking for then is some level of, of just that grit that fortitude, yeah. that ability to, when it gets tough, that they'll dig deep and they'll go for it kind of thing. Uh, and, and not necessarily in the violent sense, in the fighting sense, but just in life type thing. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think that's kind of important. Well, we've and I've sat with you on a number of panels and we've both gone at the same time, yeah. <laughs> and some people is quite quick, other people yeah. we have to sort of nurse it out of them. But yeah. the people who fail are the people who are going, yeah. We want yeah. more, and, it's, and again, it's not about belting people, but it's showing showing something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, this is one of the sort of most popular and well-known ones. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, technique first, spirit second. Oh. <laughs> I knew I knew you'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one of my pet hates. Yes, I love it. My my favourite one. <laughs> I, th I think people just use it to just... Uh -huh. 
Why do you just like this? Yeah, I, I just think people use it to justify their bad technique, that they've, they've, they've got abundance of spirit, as in fighting spirit. But I don't think that's, that's not what it means. I mean, it means intention, or it means kind of determination or focus. Um, a little bit like Zanshin has the same it, meaning. Yeah, Gijitsu, is it? Gijitsu Yori Shinjitsu. Yeah, Gijitsu is, uh, is, is, uh, is uh, like uh, your, your body, and Shinjitsu is your mind or your spirit or your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what they're saying is, is like you must have control of your of your mind, body, spirit. Not yeah, mind, body, not body, mind and spirit uh, before your body, and and it's not about just kind of like doing a really horrible technique but putting a good ki at the end, which a lot of people think it is. Um, and so yeah, it, it's it, it's I've never seen anyone. Who who kind of really kind of pushes that that one uh, like precept so much? Who has really good technique? Yeah, and I, mean, I, I, I think I grew up on that karate. I think that was the credo when I started because no one had any technique, mm. and it's a bit like okay, as long as you try hard, it's okay. Yeah, and it, it palpably isn't. Yeah, but you know, I, I suppose I find it useful in, in when classes are lackluster. I suppose, but you're quite yeah. right. As, as a principle of karate, it's totally, yeah, you know, wrong. I remember yeah. uh, re re referee um, veterans Kumite. God, and I look at them, and I, I remember stopping these guys and going, "Please do some karate. Stop <laughs> trying to hit each other and show me some karate. And whoever shows me karate, they'll win." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, honestly, that's what I've said because I was very. I, I said I'm going to disqualify both of you because yeah. you, you know, I said do Chudan Garakazuki or something do proper karate. I'm going to disqualify both. Of you. <laughs> you know, but I mean, I, I I think it maybe fits well. You know, it, it appeals to a certain type of person, like those dan gradings. You know, I saw mm. someone ages ago online who did, he did his dan grading for showdown, mm. and they had to do all the katas in the system. Plus a bow cutter, and then fight for an hour. I went with, you know, and it's like it's a, a grading by ordeal, yeah. and you know that it would all be awful, especially for showdown. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and then they pass. But I mean, you know, that that is a, that actually is an easier test than like you know, like we say, do Gadam Barai and then do we have showdown? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the hardest test to do in Korea. Absolutely. But, yeah, yeah. but you know, it, it's like it, it's it's. This is what people want to hear because mm. spirit is everything. Yeah, it's also something that you can't teach, can't develop, can't can't kind of have any. That it's like probably the least connected element to the training within your karate arsenal. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like you know, we've all we've all had beginners or or seen people, not even like not even people that do karate, uh, who have tremendous spirit. Never done karate a day in their life, and then yeah. we've all seen people who've, who've practiced karate all their life who just wither away like some wallflower when the when the kind of going gets tough. Like yeah. that spirit that they're talking about, that fortitude, yeah. that kind of resilience, nothing to do with karate whatsoever. Resilience is it? Because I've seen lots of people who are technically very good but don't like kumite. Yeah, or, you know. Yeah. You know I think it's the it's the way it's the words that you use is the way to describe. Yeah. It. You need to have I mean, both. Don't you? Yeah, I mean, like I, I, well, I, I will, I will name, I will name a name. Sure. Uh, you know, Keith Gullen, who is a seventh dan with, uh, well, I guess the JKS now. He's with the JKS. I know. I know. Uh, yeah, he, you know, he. I was training with him since I was a kid. You know, like I was first in his dojo when I was twelve years old, thirteen years old. And I used to train religiously with him every single week from when I was 16 years old. And, yeah. you know, he's known me all that time, knew me when I was in Japan, knew me when I came back from Japan, blah, 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 blah. And then in 2014, um, when, when Kigawa Sensei, when I'd been, uh, you know, had forced to, to leave the JKS and Kigawa Sensei came out over and he read a letter in front of everyone uh, saying that I had 
uh, never done the instructor's course and never uh, and my, I had a very low level and, and my crash technique was not very good and I was a liar. Um, he just stood there and accepted it and said, oh, sensei. And, you know, I think, and he was seventh dan, trained, uh, like he must be in his 70s now, but at the time he would have been training uh, probably close to 50 years yeah. uh, and run a successful club for 50 years uh, and never had the, the fortitude or resilience to stand up and say, no, no, that's wrong. I've known yeah. Scott since he was a kid and that's wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, balls, balls, balls. Balls. You need balls, don't you? Cojones. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's got nothing to do with karate. Because yeah. I've met people who've never done a day's training in their life who I would trust to stand up for me to do the right thing, that well, to do the thing that they felt was right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nothing to do with karate. Yeah. I think I'm trying to get me remember that phrase now, when 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 good people stand down or so this I can't I remember it at the end, yeah. but there's you know, yeah. that, not doing anything. You know, and also yeah. the, 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 argument, the other argument is, I, you know, we know quite a few people who have got huge amounts of spirit, who are really good at karate, who are basically slightly psychopathic, and all they can do is karate, you know, yeah. and not, yeah. not, 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 not good citizens, as it were. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. I think also because a lot of these are sort of platitudes rather than axioms, really. It's mm. easy for people to sort of, um, you know, just mouth them, even, yeah. if, even you know, easy platitudes, aren't they? I mean, yeah. I've I've actually said that spirit first technique second to you know to, to people when people aren't training hard. Yeah. You know, and I, I think I'm going to try and say something else than that now because you yeah. know sometimes you quote you quote through the in a classic it gives a dramatic impact. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll think about I'll think about rewording that really because uh, there's nothing worse than seeing horrible horrible karate. Yeah. You know? I, I I when I lived when I first yeah when I first moved to Japan. Uh, the, I was living in a, a gaijin house, you know, a house like specifically for foreigners, and uh, as most people who move to Japan do, you know. And um, there was a a guy in the from Iran, uh, Jaffa, uh, fluent yeah. Japanese. He'd been he'd, uh, he was there illegally. By the time I I met him, he'd probably been there seven eight years. Uh, yeah. One of the sweetest, most lovely guys I've ever had the pleasure to know and call a friend, and. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he a horrible life. You know, he was in the Iran-Iraq war, had fled, moved to Japan. Uh, he was being, he was working construction work illegally, but wonderful person, wonderful human being. And, uh, and as the time went on and blah, 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 I knew him and, and I, I was learning a bit of Japanese and, and we were chatting one day and, and he was saying, oh, I've got to go and do X, Y, Z. And I was like, ah, my gambate, ne? gambate. Like, you know, like, so like for those who don't know, gambate just means, uh, well, it just means persevere, but it means try your best, go for it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and and he said to me, Scott. He says, "Don't ever say that to me." I was like, "Why? Why?" Like we spoke in English, but you know, like when you're in Japan, you speak English, but every like other word is a Japanese kind of throwaway word, you know, because like that's what you do, right? Uh, and he's like, "Don't ever tell me to to gambate." I was like, "Why?" And he says, "He says I don't know anybody who says that and really means it." He says, it's such a throwaway comment. He says, yeah. what you're saying is, is like, go and try by yourself. Go, go, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't care. And I, and, I, and I was like, yeah, that's really true. That is so true. It's one of those passages, and walk away. Yeah. And, uh, and so Ooh, it gave me a new, new sense of what gambari mas, gambaru, gambate, like that, what that word can really mean, and the and the mean, and and how often it's used in Japan, with very little actual investment in what you're saying. But it's, it's tati mai, isn't it? It's a yeah. upfront what, yeah, what yeah. you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, this is getting good. See, now we're talking about linguistics. Oh, there we go. Okay, Matt, here we go. Matt, number six. Matt. Now it's going to be a long night. Gambate. It's going to be a long night. Okay. Matt, show oh, me well, I'm going to read it in English, uh, the Japanese one first. Kokoro wa hanatan koto wo yuzu. Be always be ready to release your mind. <sighs> so, um, so that's so the Japanese like, one. Like, oh, ready? Here we go. Ready? Okay. Wa za wa wa za wa e wa ke tai ni shuzu. 
<laughs> this, oh, no, 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 that's, uh, hang on, that's a different one. All right. <laughs> number six. Let's about your technique. Let's do number six. Oh, yeah, always be ready to release your mind. Okay. Isn't that something about war, having a water mind or something? That's what you're saying. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, is that mine? No, no, no you, yours too. What? Number six. Hang on, I've got my own looking you notebook. You with your translation, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know which one to pick because I've got lots of books with them in. Number six. Uh, Oh, for, uh, first, oh no, sorry. Um, Kokoro, Kokoro wa Hanatan Koto o Yosu. That one? Yeah. Kokoro, yes. Or it must be set free. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> free your mind, please. That's the LSD one. Your heart, your heart was set free. Yeah. Well, God, what do you think that means? Me? Well, I think I think that means you should liberate yourself from, um, you know, this the shuhari type thing. Yeah. Liberate yourself from the bounds of bounds of, of, of technique and blah blah blah. Shu, so I, I say it means shuhari. Yeah. And I think you know. I think that's kind of given given permission to people to to literally kind of find their own way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. That's a good one. Then we like number six. Yeah. Okay. We'll accept we that one. Move on a bit quicker. Yeah. I like okay. that. This, this misfortune always comes out of negligence. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite good, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, you know, we, so we, it's, it's never your fault. It, 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 it's never someone else's fault. Your fault. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, like, take responsibility. I, I remember. Okay, I'm getting some memories back now. I, I remember being in Switzerland with uh, with Kato Sensei and uh, Bruno Collar Sensei. They're, yeah. both, they're both dead now, unfortunately, but um, they, yeah. they, were, they were very interesting people to be with. And, uh, and there was this guy from Macedonia, maybe, or somewhere, and... And he was quite talented. He was maybe a couple of years older than me. I was I was young. I was at university, so it's probably early twenties. He maybe been mid 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 twenties, and um, and he was talented, but obviously hadn't really been taught much, you know, in karate. And uh, and he was going on and on and on and on to Kato Sensei about how he wanted Kato Sensei to make him the chief instructor. Let's say Macedonia. I'm not too sure. Um, and. Uh, and I want to be the chief instructor, and and uh, and Katsunsu was like, well, uh, you know, he obviously didn't want to do it, you know, and he obviously didn't want to, because this guy, although physically could move quite well, didn't have the technical knowledge, didn't know kata, blah blah blah. I mean, you know, had his challenges, and I don't know how, but Katsunsu was probably drunk, and so so he eventually <laughs> said, to Scott, he said, Scott, what do you think? What do you think about this guy? And the guy was there, you know, next to me. Well, you yeah. tell him what you think. And uh, and all night, all night he'd been going on about the reasons why he was lacking in one way or another in his karate ability. Um, and I just said to him, I says, there's no excuses in karate. And yeah. I, and I was only young and naive and stupid. And I, it, was, it was no way in my place to say anything like that, but Katzen had forced me into it. And so I remember Kata going, exactly, exactly, see, that's it. <laughs> I was like, oops. That's true, though. That's true, one of our preachers. Yeah. yeah. No I mean, I, I, I be, I'm really into Stoic philosophy at the moment, and like, you know, Marcus Aurelius. And he, he always says in things like this, if you if you meet bad people and hang out with them, they're going to be bad. Yeah. So don't hang out with them. You know, so yeah. it's a bit, if you're, if you're negative, if you put yourself in situations where, you know, bad things happen, it's your fault. If you train wrong, yeah. it's your fault. You know, yeah. if, 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 if you smash your knee up because you're doing bad training, yeah. it's negligence. You yeah. know, you have a juice, maybe it's good. You, have, you know, I think as a, you know, as karate, we have a duty of care to teach, well, to do good karate. And as instructors, we have a duty of care to teach people to do good karate. Absolutely. You know? And yeah. I, I think so, I like that one. Cool. Right. It's a good job there are 180, 108 precepts, aren't there? Yeah, I know, yeah. Okay. Go on. Next. I think we've never done this before. Deconstructed. <laughs> right. Are we on another one now? Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah. Are you ready? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, go. Yeah. Okay. So, 
We are now back, everybody. We are doing um, number eight. Number eight, yes. Oh. Well, it's number eight. eight. Okay, yes, on. yes, there are. Do not think that karate training is only in the dojo. Now, I like this one. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I agree. I mean... Well, okay, like, go on. Well, the amount of people that just... Uh, you know, the amount of people that kind of tr come to the dojo and train twice a week uh, and an, an hour each class and then expect to get to black belt is unbelievable. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I think... Uh, I mean, I think if it's a passion of yours, then then everything's karate, right? Every everything like like I I, I was listening to um, I was look, listening to a a uh, podcast by uh, Lex uh, Friedman, is it? Uh, who's a uh, a kind of physicist from MIT, and they were talking about uh, he was talking about this Israeli uh, uh, astrophysicist, and they were talking about uh, new kind of uh, uh, kind of bodies that are found uh, like interstellar bodies that have come uh, from from um, some other solar system into our solar system it's a really interesting kind of scientific uh, talk podcast and i was listening and thinking oh yeah i think i could crowbar the crowbar that into a karate article because yeah. <laughs> because there's some interesting ideas that you were talking about and it's like that's just like karate that is so i think everything's karate uh, and I, I think if you're passionate about it, you'll find ways not only to think about it, but also to physically train it all the time. Yeah, it's like as an instructor, you know, I, t t I say, you, you know, you've got to take karate home with you. Yeah. You'll never get any good. I mean, I always remember, you know, like you and me, I, you know, I used to just train all the time. I mean, I love kicking. I got really good at kicking and stretching because mm. I just kicked all the time. I used to turn the lights out. In the, you know, I, Rick, Rick, Rick Jackson was talking about kicking his mum's plants and not petals off. Yeah. I used to walk around our house and I'd turn the lights on and off with my feet, you know, and then I'd go, I'd go on the stairs and put my leg on the stairs and stretch, yeah. you know, like we all, we all did. Yeah, so you, yeah. You, you know, yeah. But I, I mean, I, I, I like, I like the idea of, you know, training all the time, you know, and n not the idea of looking around like, like you know, for a fight all yeah. the time. Yeah. But I think, you know, if, if, if you're a martial artist or a dancer or a physician or a phys physician or a, a, a pianist, you just have to practice all the time Absolutely. And, and, see, and see everything in karate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I was I, when I, in my comedy career, I used to kiai when I went on stage. And oh, really? cool. Please welcome us, and there'd be like this cheer, and I'd go, ah, and go, ah. <laughs> it really worked for me. It was, you know, how, it's how to make an entrance, darling. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Well, you know, yeah, it's different. And, and then, yeah, and then you know, doing stand up, I felt I was invincible. I felt invincible because I was always, you know, I gave off that aura of of, of that, which was, you know, a lot of it was from karate. Yeah, so, yeah, you know. yeah. I I once uh, I was telling this to the to the other day to the to the guys, but uh, you know, Kato Sensei used to have um, used to have kind of black and brown belt training. Uh, uh, camps, I guess, at his, uh, in the in Whitchurch in Shropshire where he lived, and uh, basically everyone would stay at his house. He had this big uh, detached house, loads of ground, big uh, veranda type thing, blah blah blah. And you just took a sleeping bag and and slept on the floor, and you trained Friday night, uh, early Saturday morning for a, a seven a.m. jog, then like three hours in the morning training, lunch three hours in the afternoon. And then, then Sunday morning jog, and then three, maybe sometimes four hours Sunday, finished at like two o'clock in the afternoon, and then you went home. Really tough, hard weekends, you know. And uh, and I remember I first you had to be 16 and above and a brown belt and above. And I got I became brown belt and, and 16 by the same time. So I was kind of going. But by the time I got to university, uh like like maybe 20, 21, you know, I'd been going, I'd been going uh Obviously, since I was 16, everyone knew me and I'd gone from this, you know, little boy from Malton, as, as I was used to call, to, oh, this is Scott, you know, this is he's the captain of the British team and blah, blah, blah. And it was great. And I remember turning up there once and uh, he had this kitchen. And I was a little bit late. You, you turn up kind of like Friday training and I was, I'd missed the Friday training for some reason. So I turned up late and they're all in his front room. Like it could be 40, 50 people and, and his front room and I could hear them all drinking. So I went to the kitchen. Doors were open, walked in, heard in the front room, the door was open. So I kind of ran through and slid 
who had my socks on, slid into the living room and said, <laughs> I'm here! Excellent. <laughs> I had no idea who was in that room. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and, and, and I slid in and the whole room went silent. I'm here! Yeah, I, really looked at me. I went, Scott! <laughs> <laughs> I knew Excellent. I'd arrived. <laughs> Hello. But I, I suppose I've just, must, I also, you know, I, I've always, you know, I remember when I first trained in, in London at the class, but they, no one did, they, they didn't do sit ups or press ups or anything. And all right. the training in Liverpool always involved like 100 press ups, 100 mm -hmm. sit ups, 100 squats, standard at the end of every class. Yeah. You know, when it goes your roof, still do it. You know, the first 40 minutes is, is you know, I hold your one loop, get fit. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then, so and I was told in London, but you know, I saw we we know actually a small guy. He said, "Oh, you know, because you should do that. Um, you should be, you do that outside the dojo." But then, but most people didn't. We don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so like, you know, like so, when, when when I go to Ireland, we train with you guys. You know, a good half three quarters of the training is physical training, isn't it? The morning training, you yeah. do Tabata intervals. You know, up down Sally, blah blah blah. And you know, I you know, I I still do stuff like that in my classes. Mainly because lots of people don't. Yeah. Because you know, and that again, you know, you need to take your correct. Like you were training every day in Japan, from you know, for large portions of my life, I've trained every day, even if that every day was running and then doing hundred press ups, hundred sit ups, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And that is that's you know that's be, being a karate character. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, and that, that's kind of what I think. And as we get older, the modern world, you know, used to be. Three times a week when I first started, three times a week was standard. Yeah. To Marshall Street, it was five times a week for squat on a, on a, you know. And then, but now, like a lot of people, that, that once a week is the model, isn't it, for kids? Well, I mean, I, I, when I started, it was, it was three times a week and two hours per class. Yeah, well, um, yeah, we were four hours on Thursday. It was two, two yeah. hour class was standard. Now, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of classes, that was one hour. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Okay, let's, let's move on because. We've got no, we really, we really got done eight. Right, going all right, we'll move on. Right. Number nine, uh, number eight B. No, number nine A. Karate practice is, is for your, karate practice is for your entire life. There is no limit. Yes. Shogai karate. Shogai karate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Put your everyday living into karate, and you'll find a subtle mystery. Put your yeah. everyday living in karate, and you'll find a subtle mystery. This is, well, I'll tell you what now. Arayuru mono wa karate ka seo soko ni mio mi ari. Your Japanese is brilliant. It's very yeah. good. It's like I'm reading it out of a book. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, the only way, I mean, the only person who's ever talked about this was Higawana Sensei once on a course said something like he practices karate every day trying to find something. And he said, it's like trying to grasp a cloud. So yeah. I, I suppose the talking at this sort of um, subtle mystery of training, some sort of secret. Yeah, I'm looking at... Um, what does your one say? Yeah, number 10. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, th I think so. Mine is apply the way of karate in all, to all things. Therein lies the beauty. Is that the one? Oh, yeah, it must be. Not, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's the other translation. Then. Maybe I'm Para yuru mono o karate ka se yo soku ni miyomi ari. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, to be fair, though, like, I, I, what I would say to that is, is, not so much now, but like when I first started, um, when I started, when I when I came back from Japan, and I and I started kind of in some way trying to replicate the instructor's course, as in do the repetitions of the instructor's course in my own training, in the instructor's training in the mornings and so on. And and, and the, in in no way have we changed that. Uh, we still do that kind of like high reps, as, as you know, uh, of of kind of kihon. Uh, and what I used to find is small nuances. When you repeat it so much, yeah. over and over again, you find the nuance. So, and as soon as you find the nuance, then you start to see things in it that you haven't seen before. Um, almost like when, you, when, when, when you're on autopilot, 
you become more aware of those little things that kind of sprout up and, and you can you can feel or, or see or, or whatever it is. And so I think, um, yeah, I, I think this, this is slightly different in terms of applying things all, uh, to all things, applying karate to all things. Um, but like to, to, on a very basic level, once you do loads and loads of reps, you start to see things that are far more subtle than than just kind of looking at the technique and i think in yeah. terms of applying th to all things well then that that's just merely talking about principles what are the principles like we're, we're physically you know the the principles of of uh, using your body well you can apply that to all things or well, the principles of kumite uh where you can apply those to all things in terms of interaction and you know like there's the what's the goal in no shop where they're using yeah. the, the book of five rings to, you know, there's there's uh, investment bankers or businessmen using the golden no show to to study business. You know, it's like principles are principles. Basic principles are basic principles can apply to anything and everything. I also think, you know, you know, we we doing training with Rick Jackson Sensei. He talks about this wonderful thing about the kata doing itself, mm. and that only happens with massive, massive reps and lots and lots of doing the kata. Yeah. So that's a possibility where, um, you know, the subtle mystery. I mean, you know, I'm sure you have every now and again, you have a moment in karate where you do something great. You know, I mean, more in Kumite, I would find. You, you, nap, you get somebody, you go, I'm going to do that. You know, it just sort of happened. And that's yeah. a possibility, I suppose. Yeah. Although I, th I often find, uh, I often find, like, things that, are, things that are great, that are seen as great, are really often pointed out by other people yeah um, like I, i've done loads of things well not loads but i've done some things uh in my career that people afterwards have said that that's amazing i've never seen anybody do that in my life type thing i was like what what no, that thing that you just did then what thing oh that thing oh that yeah oh, yeah, yeah i do that all the time you know uh yeah. but it, it's it's uh i think often when people people can judge it as I mean, again, off the subject, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think uh, sometimes uh, greatness is seen by other people rather than yourself. Yeah, but, but also there's that even shin, isn't there? There's sometimes things just happen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe. Yeah. You know. Okay. The next one I like is karate is like boiling water, take it off the heat, and it's gone. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great as well. Yeah. You've just got to be training. I think that's a really you know, there's, how many times do you meet people of, of any activity, you know? Oh, I used to be. I used to be a footballer, or you know, I used to play, and who, yeah. who aren't anymore. Yeah. You, you know, you're only you're only as good. Uh, there's a Joe Lewis, who was the American kickboxer, who was one, uh, you know, one of the first full contact kickboxing guys, and I think he got second down in Okinawa, and he really didn't like Okinawa karate anymore. Mm. Because pe people ask me what grade I am. He goes, I'm a black belt. I'm Joe Lewis. I work out. I'm fit. I'm a black belt now. If I'm not working out. I'm not a black belt. I'm, yeah. I kind of like. Yeah, oh. I, think, I think we know a lot of people whose karate is, is nearly tepid now. Yes, yes. yes. Mine's a bit rickety, but red hot. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. This is okay. a good one. 12, yeah? Do mm. not think you have to win. Rather think that you do not have to lose. Yeah, I like that one. I do like that one. Nick uh, Nick Held from uh, oh, yeah. Leeds. I know Nick, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, runs dojo with Matt Price, uh, lovely guy, seventh down I think with the JKS. He once said to me, he said, he said, Scott, he says, he says, you're the you're the least competitive person I know. I was I like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and he said, but I don't get. It. He says because obviously to get where you have got gotten to, you must be competitive. He says I just don't get it. And I, I think at the time neither did I. I was like, oh yeah, I suppose, yeah, that's the point, yeah, because I never really into competition karate and never really competitive in that sense. But one thing that I hate is losing. Oh. I, I don't really care to win, but I really hate losing. So, so um, I, I, I think that 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 kind of philosophy of just making sure you don't lose is really good because then you're not seeking anything. You're not like yeah. you're not trying to you're not trying to attain something because as soon as you attain it, then you know like the things that I have won, the competitions that I have won, are very hollow experiences. 
But um, I think if you if you avoid things, if you avoid losing, if you keep on pushing yourself, then that's always kind of a, an experience that you can try to replicate every single time. You win the world championships, you win it. It's a hollow experience. You'll never do it again, really. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Well, it's, it's unlikely you'll do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I mean, that's yeah. great. But also, like, say in a grading, you know, you, we're not looking, in the Kumite, we're not looking for people to win. So, you know, say there's someone who's got a fantastic Joe Damawashi Gary and they do a grading, they have three fights, and all they do is Joe Damawashi Gary each time. Yeah. We're not, that's, that's not, that's not passing your grading, is it? That's no. just showing you can do, especially go for stand up. It's like yeah. we want to see off defense, we want to see size of back here, we want to see tactics. Yeah. You know, and, so, and, and, then, and then in life, you, could, you know, there's a Japanese, I think it's a Japanese phrase, it's win by losing. Mm. You know, sometimes just let it go. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it's really good just to not be bothered. You know, yeah. in the dojo, you know, you meet people sometimes in the dojo, they really want to have a, you know, I don't know, have a ding dong or something. And I think, you know, no, no, it's not bother. You know, <laughs> just go on, you're okay, it's fine. Yeah, you go on, I'm not bothered. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. I think that's a good philosophy. Yeah. Because, you know, otherwise, if you look at someone like, you know, like, I don't know, Donald Trump, you know, people lose. You know, you lose, losing with grace is actually quite a good skill, actually. You know? Fake news. Fake news. Yeah, sorry. Victory depends on the ability to, sting, to distinguish vulnerable points from unvulnerable ones, invulnerable ones. What does yours say? Number, number 13. Oh, okay. Hang on. Sorry. We'll go through uh, quicker in a minute. Okay, the, the outcome of the battle depends on how one handles emptiness and fullness, weakness and strengths. Ooh. Did you, uh, did you do make, make adjustments according to your opponent? Take in your yeah, 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 take in the yacht, Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that the one we're talking about? Yeah, number 13. Okay. I think so, my translation is not so good. Make adjustments according to your opponents. With my, that's yeah. That's, fine, isn't it? that's all good, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's basically, have tactics. I think yeah. you know, you, you you know, you know this. You know, I think for a long time, a lot of. I mean, I like low grades just to attack. Mm. You know, like you know, I often say to people, you know, if you're a brown belt fight, fighting a black belt, attack, 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 get beat, but attack because you're going to yeah. lose anyway. Yeah. But then when you, you know, when, when I often do, when I do Kumite classes, I say to black belts, you know, you don't have to wipe them out. Let, you know, mm -hmm. use tactics on them. You know, yeah. pick a technique that you're not very good at or you're weak at, and you can only use a shoe and a wash and you can make yeah. it work. So yeah. That, that's, yeah, that, that's pretty good. So, yeah, absolutely. 14. Okay. Are we on 14 now? Uh, what did you, oh, okay. The fight depends on how you manoeuvre guarded and unguarded positions. We've just done that. Right? Uh, What's that one in Japanese? Uh, Tatakai wa kiyojitsu no okay. soju ikan ni ari. Yeah. So uh, my translation is the outcome of the battle depends on how to handle emptiness and fullness, weakness and strength. I like this kind of like a uh, sense of full space and negative space, positive space yeah. and negative space, and and, um, and and being able to see that. So so like. Uh, some uh, like they've done studies about you know uh, quarterbacks in 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 uh, American football, and yeah. the the most successful like most quarterbacks will look you know when they when they're throwing the ball they will look at the person they're throwing it and they'll try to throw it at them or something like that. Whereas the best quarterbacks see see neg empty space, they see they see the opening. And they will they will see everybody moving around the empty space, and they'll throw it towards the empty space. And I think this this sense of uh, of of uh, negative and positive space, or or weaknesses and strengths and fullness and, and emptiness, I think is really super important. And and being able to kind of uh, kind of uh, interact with those those things. Is it ma in Japanese controlling space, or ma in in all? My ma is my ma ma ma. So I mean, in all Japanese art, ma is really important, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah, in, absolutely, yeah. And in swordsmanship, it's that if you mm. control that, it's really important. Mm. So be be, mm. be be aware of the space, I suppose, is quite good. And also, uh, to me, it always strikes. It's always when when Rick Sensei talks about kind of emptiness and about. Uh, the Zen sense of emptiness and the Zen yeah. Zen 
fullness. Um, I think it always kind of resonates with me about the, the emptiness, kind of the void, so to speak. Um, so I think that that kind of really has a connection, deep connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right, move on. Okay. Now we we did this the other week. Think of the hands and feet as swords. Stop. I thought. I've got a, someone else. Someone else uses this as well. I'll see if I can find oh, it. Who else uses it? Yeah, give us a minute. Oh yeah, this has got it. Uh, this came from Itatsu. So Itatsu, oh, yeah. Itatsu was Funakashi's first teacher, and he says the purpose of karate is to make bones and feet as hard as rock, and to use the arms as legs as spears. So that's what he said. Yeah. I mean, I think I think there's nothing worse. Then when you see someone blocks block someone, and they, and they'll they'll block and they'll go oh 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 you know <laughs> yeah I, mean, I, I think I think there is a great sense that that this this is not you, this is just the tool of you, and and so that sense of you know I remember when I first started the insurance course and and uh, we were doing the line committee. And he had a, he attacked, attacked with like a fierce kind of, you know, whatever. And I kind of blocked and, you know, whatever. Did something perfectly natural, trying to mm. defend himself. And Kagawa says he went off on one. He's like, he says, you don't care about your nose. You don't care about your teeth. You don't care about your jaw. You don't care about your face. You fight head on. You just go forward. Don't you ever turn your head again. You just kind of like head on and go for it. And um, and I thought he was joking. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I've seen the t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> he can't be serious, right? But then the look on his face told me that he was definitely serious. Uh, so I stopped myself laughing. But he was, you know, he was deadly serious. And, what, and, and to be fair, what he meant was, this is not me. You know, these are not me. You know, this is this is just a vehicle for whatever me is. And uh, and so, yeah, if you're going to treat your body like a weapon, it's a weapon. And you don't want to be kind of uh, uh, kind of thinking of it otherwise. And, and you want to make sure your trainer is in that, in that way. So you have to yeah. build your knuckle. No, I, I agree. But also, it's a bit like, you know, if you're in a boxing match, if you turn your back, you can be disqualified. Safe, yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And, and I, I know this still, without being macho about it, you know, crazy people need to be tough. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, and it, it's a bit like, you know, there's nothing worse than those people who, like, block really clumsily. But, you know, yeah. a, well a, a well-timed block can, like, A, hurt, and yeah. B, really powerful, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a good one. Right, yeah. moving on. This is we're getting there now. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is good. Yeah. When you leave home, you have to. You you have. When you leave home, you have to think you have a million enemies. Your behaviour invites trouble from them. No. Always looking. Yeah, I just that one. one. The paranoia one, isn't it? Yeah, I don't like that one. I, I have to confess, when I was a brown belt in Liverpool. Uh, I used to walk around the streets looking for trouble because <laughs> I was a brown belt. And probably Rick Jackson sense he probably walked, definitely walked down the streets. He, he did say he'd cross over the road yeah. to, to, to find trouble. I mean, I was very lucky that I never, you know, never actually managed not to find trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he used to consciously invite trouble. Right. And, you know, I mean, I think I just think that's a very unusual one really i mean i suppose it's saying be mindful of, it's a bit like maybe know, know the green cross crow co so when you cross the road look out for danger yeah but, but you, you know, this, you know I, I don't like the idea of like you know thinking you might be attacked all the time yeah and i think in karate the world is the karate world is full of of quite paranoid uh fearful people who yeah. are you know, fearful of losing their power their technique, the privilege, the prestige, fear of fear of loss, of so many things. 
that yeah. the last thing you want to do is make them paranoid that someone might attack them. Most people, most of the time, are good. That is the that is the history of humankind. Because ultimately, we are quite a weak species. I mean, we can at the top of our head we can name like dozens and dozens of species in this world that are far more physically physically stronger than us that would kill us. And the only way that we've survived is by cooperation. Yeah. You know, of course mental ability but even that's not going to get you far unless you cooperate and and so the the history of mankind is is made up of cooperation of empathy of kindness of working together so to walk out the the the, the door walk out your door thinking that there are enemies out there i think is deeply paranoid but also i think you also need to be present you know i mean so I remember being in a pub with you one time, some, something happened, and you said, let's go. And I thought that was really good. Do you remember this was ages ago now? We just went. But also, I also remember my, 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 my friend of mine, I've got a friend, dear friend, who's been mugged yeah. about four times. Right. And he's just, for want of a better word, he's not streetwise. Yeah. You know, so I, I think, you know, I, I'm, 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 you know, and I don't think that involves being, like, switched on or being yeah. tough or anything. It's just yeah. maybe, again, making a good choice. Yeah. You don't be negligent. So, you know, if you're in a pub and there's trouble, go. Yeah. You know, if, you know, uh, I, I think me, I think, I think that's, you know, having, some, but I'm not sure if you can teach that to people. I think you need to. Yeah, me neither. I mean, like, like, of course, of course, understand and believe that people are generally speaking are good and cooperative, but also don't be naive. You know, yeah. generally speaking, people are good. That doesn't mean everyone's good. And so, yeah, you yeah. have to have a level of zanshin, a level of awareness, a level yeah. of of, uh, of uh, understanding people. And I think, I think that's what kumite is good for you, because because kumite is that like micro micro lessons or, or lessons about micro uh, um, aggressions or like twitches or like a little bit of movement, a little bit of kind of uh, intention, showing their intention that you can read people really well. And so, so I think, I think that's super important. And that's what karate can teach you um, is to read people really well because you're yeah, oh, yeah. dojo mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that that involves being in a, a, a proper dojo and that's probably yeah. another discussion about what is a proper dojo yeah. but you have to have a gamut of human emotions in a dojo there should always be a little bit of fear a little yeah. bit of excitement a bit of trepidation a bit of joy a bit of yeah. nurturing but you need that gamut of all those emotions in the dojo though absolutely yeah. okay moving on now there we go uh, okay beginners must master the stances and postures natural postures for advance so like is it like um low uh, low stances for beginners, high stances for advance. Yeah, I, I wish I wish more senior grades would listen to that. Or I wish more senior grades had listened to that probably 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, especially in Europe. <laughs> yeah, no posture. I mean, in the end, the posture of no posture. Yeah, you know, I mean, we always go back to Steve Ubel again, and you know, all it is, Karasi, you know, it's a lot of karate should just be natural. Yeah. There's a great clip somewhere. Of, there's a stage at the JKA when like Tanaka and people used to do kumite. And they used to just, they're still tall on YouTube, and they come out and they're standing like that. Mm. And the other bloke's standing like that. And then suddenly, it's bah, 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 bah. but there's no no posture whatsoever. And like, it's really dangerous. <laughs> you know, they're just basically standing like, like that. And then, bam, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I suppose, I mean, I think that is very perhaps the most misunderstood one because we always want karate to look like karate. And probably karate at its highest level, like, you know, there's no beginning, there's no end. Because yeah. we like, I, I mean, is this one of the ones later on there's no posture in karate? You know, I mean, so, people go, what's karate? Oh, I'm doing karate. Yeah. But really, yeah. you're doing karate. You know, yeah. you, um, I, I yeah. think maybe karate is almost defined in the media and by beginners and as, as karate. Well, that's the thing is that, like, like the, the, you know, karate is movement. It's not, it's not a photograph, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I'm sure, like Nakayama says, they started started doing the 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 best karate, uh, best karate kata videos, didn't he? Before before he passed away, there's those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. But like, I'm sure nowadays, if he was going to put together a scientifically based um, kind of manual of karate like dynamic karate it would have been in a video context it would have been in a dvd kind of context because, yeah, or, because or pictures i mean you know 
I mean, in a place just... we, when I lived, yeah. Russie, you, you know, you went from this to this. You yeah. went from this to nothing. There's, there's no in, yeah. in between bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh... like we, like the majority of Russia, even now, is people doing that. They don't really care. They go from here and they don't really care how they end up here. Yeah. As long as they go from, I don't know, from, from this yeah. to this, yeah. they don't care about anything, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as Steve Rubel says, he says, as Rick Jackson says, he says, as we all, you know, say, you know, craft is at the ING, it's the doing. It's the yeah. movement of it. It's not the thing. You know, karate is a verb. It's not a noun. So you got to be doing. Mm. Yeah. I, I still think, yeah, the karate world is still away from that, really. And certainly the media's popular image of what karate is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, oh, I like this one. Practicing kata is one thing. Engaging in a real fight is another. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's fairly obvious, isn't it, really? I think there's a lot of kata, kata bunkai exper um, experts out there who uh, who should read that a little bit more as well. I mean, I, th yeah. I think, you know, kata, for me, well, like, kata means, of course, form. But it can also mean the mould, or it can mean the law. Um, yeah. So kata is the law of karate, or kata is the mould. I think I, I like mould the best because, because you know, if, you, if you've got a mould, like a, a plaster of Paris mould, You've got the you know the rubber thing, and you fill it up with plaster of Paris, and then you take the mold away, and then you have the thing. But yeah, like yeah. you know, I think kata should be seen as that. We we have kata is the mold of karate, and so you fill it up with you fill the mold of kata with yourself, with yourself, kind of with your own physicality, and then you take the kata away, and then you have that physicality. That's what karate is. Um, mm. So so for me, yeah, abs absolutely, like like kata is one thing, but the application of karate, the, the the doing of karate, is something very different. Well, I mean, there's two things there, because, like, you know, the JK sort of reverse engineered it, didn't they? And they made kata as, like, defence against karate attacks. Yeah. And Shotokan, Shotokan kata are very different from Okinawa. You know, we all know talk about Okinawa karate. When most moves in Okinawa karate are far more easy to see bunkai for. Yeah. Where Shotokan katas aren't. Yeah, and you know they've got that dogmatic insistence in Shotokan that you know oh, she's you know every move means something, every move works in a fight when it doesn't. Really. Yeah, yeah. And I think my take on Kata is what if? What if someone grabs you here? Will I do that? What yeah. if someone? And if, so Kata because it gives you a load of sequences to practice yeah. as shadow boxing based yeah. on that idea of you know the sort of the, the, the rule of three. Or the rule of doing something twice and then doing a variation on it. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just the way it, it was. It was an arc, a teaching method of its time yeah. before you do, and because you were sent on your own to practice. And I think I think Freud said, you know, sometimes cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And and sometimes gidambarai is just gidambarai. It doesn't have to be twenty ways to disarm someone with a knife. It can yeah. just be Gidambarai. And you're just practicing that synchronization, that opening, that, that driving of your stance. It's just that technique. That's all it is. Don't try yeah. to give it any greater value. Yeah. There's a thing called Occam's razor in philosophy where sometimes the most obvious answer is the correct one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and, and uh, but I mean, we, I think karate especially now, because there's money in to be made as well, you know, to be to be a, a bunkai master, you know, yeah. you could, a lot of things you can do with it so, absolutely yeah. anyway we'll crack on we'll crack okay, on we've got, uh, we've got five minutes so uh we've got two left oh excellent two left. perfect there you go yeah. do not forget do not forget strength and softness of power stretching and competition of the body slowness and speed of technique supply these correctly yeah Part that of sounds all right isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 again, I, I think there's an awful lot of people who need to read that a little bit more. That that softening or, and that that becoming more flowy. Yeah, it's just like, and I think like we we everyone says, oh, you know, karate helps your fitness and your flexibility and your strength. Well, like th then if that's true, why are there so many stiff old? kind of karateka who, who, you know, good karate, of course, good karate, I think, should should increase your strength and fitness and flexibility 
And then as you get older and older, it should increase your elasticity. You should become more and more bouncy. And uh, like as, as the natural spring in your step leaves you with age, I think you should really work on that, that natural flow and that natural bounce and that, you know, that that's, that's what karate should help you with. But everyone's forever looking for that youthful, harder, faster, stronger karate. It's not so good. Yeah. I, I always think, I've, I always said about 10 years ago, I said, oh, when I'm 60, I'll do Tai Chi. Well, I think I actually don't need to do Tai Chi. I can just do, still do karate, but yeah. not do it the way I did when I'm 50 or, or yeah. now, really. You know, yeah. and it's still karate because yeah. you know it, it, you can just do you can do soft elastic karate. Yeah. And so it it, it it's yeah it, it's very wise, but again, it goes against the a grain of what people think karate is. Mm. You know, I think you know in their mind, and you know, and especially people who started karate a long time ago, you know, where it's like kung fu as hard kung fu and soft kung fu. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you know, Kung Fu guys called, called, called karate rudimentary Shaolin, you know, mm. rudimentary Shaolin of hard style. But there's nothing at all to stop us doing soft karate. Yeah. I mean, I think those people are kind of almost like prisoners of their own imagination. Yeah. But also, <laughs> we always come back to this. There's a comfort in ignorance. Yeah. Comfort to, there's a comfort in doing the same old stuff because it, it's like a, a chant. It's like a mantra. Yeah, and no matter if your knees falling off, you can't do it anymore, and you get that false feedback of stamping and whacking, yeah. Yeah. and you you know you know it's a pain in the ass to worry about principles, mm. you know to think about moving from your centre, tucking your tailbone in, squeezing and releasing when you can just do, do this. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not joking. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. we see it all the time, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, yeah. you know, and you know, maybe maybe they can be deludedly happy doing that. Yeah. You know, and I think yeah, another one of your sayings, which I always like, is you know, you can do things the easy way or the hard way. Yeah. Pick the hard way. Yeah. And often the hard way is not the physically hard way. Yeah. It's much harder to, like, you know, we like Gidambra, it's much harder to do a really good Gidambra, get a connected Gidambra ride, than yeah. it's just to do one of them. So, so yeah. last question, last question. Um, this, the, 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 I don't like the translation for that one. It says, it, it, uh, it, it, we talked about it last week, it's important to polish your mind. Oh, yeah. And I think, I think that's kind of great, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think, I think in conclusion, yeah. like, he has, he has some good ones there, really. Oh, he did. I mean, yeah, I mean, what, one thing I was going to say, don't forget, this is the, the man, the sensei, the old sensei, who changed it from Chinese hand to yeah. empty hand. And the emptiness was very much a Buddhist philosophy of emptiness. Mm. I, I think that's the genius of Funakoshi because he was a, you know, was ahead of his time. Yeah. He, he changed Todi and Chi, you know, and he, he brought this Buddhism to, to karate, this philosophy to karate, which I think we should salute him for. And he took a lot of stick for it for a long time. Yeah. I mean, you know, Chucky Motobutu, who I talked about, street baller, he just called his art Todi. He never yeah. called it karate. Yeah. So this. And Funakoshi was a, a teacher. He's a primary school teacher. Mm. So you know, he wasn't. A, he wasn't a tough guy. He wasn't. He wasn't one of the you know nut yeah. jobs. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. Well. What, what was absolutely. your conclusion? Can you say? Say it. Yeah. What was your conclusion? Well, my conclusion. I think. I think there's. I think there's lots of good sound advice in the in the Niju Kun. I yeah. think at the moment that people start allowing it to become dogmatic, they miss the point. And, oh. and ultimately, there is an under, underlying theory, current of free your mind, find your own way, kind of use this as a, as a framework, but not as a cage. And, yeah. uh, and the moment that you start to kind of make them dogmatic rules that you must follow mindlessly, you've completely, utterly missed the point. Mm. And but that is unfortunately a trait of humanity in many ways. Yeah, you know, look at all the all the world's great religions. You know, you know, but it is a, it is a trait of humanity. It shouldn't be a trait of karateka. That's the point. I like yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Good. So well, okay. how does this fit in with HTKI principles then? Well, 
HDKI principles are to, uh, well, we have four, yeah? We have uh, to teach good karate and be kind, yeah. to, to uh, provide opportunity, yeah. uh, to have karate adventures, and shuhari. I mean, I think ultimately shuhari just is basically the, the, the shorthand for everything that maybe Funakoshi Sensei was trying to say. Hmm. Um, and then for the the modern world, because ultimately, I was thinking about this today, though, you know, like, you know, the American Constitution, again, going off on a tangent, but the American Constitution is considered one of the best documents ever written. Yeah, yeah. In terms of, uh, in terms of governance. But one of the things, if there's any American, uh, any American uh, watchers uh, watching this, uh, one of the things that the American Constitution uh, sets or initially sets set forth was that it should be there should be a constitutional uh, convention every twenty years or maybe every yeah. fifty yeah. years where they tear it up and rewrite it. That's yeah. never happened. Yeah, there's been amendments, but it's never been torn up and rewritten. Um, yeah. But I think. I think what, the reason why the, uh, they, they wanted a, a constitutional convention every um, every 20, whatever, I can't remember, whatever, 20, 30 years, 50 years, wherever it was, was because there's an acknowledgement that times change. And and so with the HTK, I'm not going to try to compare Freedom Conscious Sensei's Need You Could or the American Constitution to the HTK uh, principles, but let me, but like, with the idea of shuhari, which me encapsulates all the good elements of what Funakoshi says he said, plus the modern things that we have to combat, and certainly combating, you know, the idea of first of all, an organisation should teach good karate. Above all else, that's your product. Make sure you do yeah. it well. Yeah. Whilst whilst being kind to people, because there's no reason to not be, and and that's what is the bedrock of all budo to halt conflict is to be kind. And I think, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, of providing opportunity, I mean, like that's the only way that you can have a sustainable organization because we're fighting, fighting a time where organizations just implode, mm. you know? And, and lastly, to have karate adventures, I think is, is just because it's recognition that this is no longer about life and death. This is no longer about kind of going out and, and looking for foe. Uh, every time you leave your house this is about kind of uh you know fulfilling your fulfilling your your life in the best possible way which is the ultimate self-defense yeah i mean i i think that line about you know going out for to, to, to fight against foes is like a, a sort of a remnant from the old bujitsu idea yeah that, you know obviously in 1924 you know it was still trying to make japanese martial arts a budo and about fighting and death and stuff and I think it's just of its time, and if yeah. that is palpably gone. It should be, you know, it should that, that one could you can go now. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Still, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I still think people come to well, less and less now, but there still needs to be a martial element to to yeah, it, yeah, you know. But and in any good dojo where you're facing someone and, and you're going to fight them, then there is a martial element. Yeah, well, like we talked last last time, you know, Go Hong Kumite is a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of, of karate martial arts in, yeah. in action you know? but you know just one thing is like you know someone someone got in touch with me today and asked about coming to Kangeko from a different organization and mm. i said of course you can come you know come bring your son you get a certificate you do all of them and like she was literally going oh it's so kind of you thank you you know and i wouldn't i'm not supposed to go and i just said you're a, you're a grown-up yeah you know and, and there's no, it's free by the way it's a grown-up just come yeah. have a karate adventure train yeah. And, you know, the, the, this, you know, we talked about this a lot in COVID times, you know, sometimes people are just chasing, chasing money, you know, and I can understand everyone needs to make money. I'll never, ever, you know, you know every, we all need, need to make a living. Yeah. But a lot of, a lot of crazy organizations are take, 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 take. And yeah. in the end, that's not sustainable because in the end, people will just get fed up. Absolutely. I mean, you've got you you got to get you know money for value, but you've also got value for money. So so if you're providing a a kind of um, if you're providing a service that is valuable, then of course you're going to get paid. But uh, but I think during COVID, the service that we're providing, kind of you know online karate seminars, it's not you can't charge 
your value, your value, because it's not the same value. Like I've, I've just been, I've, I'm teaching uh, for Canada. Um, I'm teaching a, a weekend seminar, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, for Canada oh, yeah. next, next month. And uh, and like I, I said, said they said, oh, you know, what's your daily fee? And I was like, well, look, this is my daily fee, uh, but there is no way that I expect you to pay that. So you know, pay me what you want to pay me. Literally pay me what you want to pay me. It's your choice. Yeah. And I've, I've said that to anybody who has um, who has booked me for a, for a seminar over the last year. Like, I'm not going to charge you my daily fee. Of course well, I'm not. You know, you've got free daily training at the Humber, haven't you? Yeah. 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 I mean, we're doing lots for free. But if someone wants a free weekend seminar type thing, blah, 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 not free weekend yeah. seminar. But if they want a weekend seminar and they want to book me, Okay, they're going to pay me because it's like the time that I'd normally with my family. Okay, I get that, but it's not like I'm away all weekend. You know, you know what I mean? I'm going well, to. You know, teach you we for- know there's some big organisations out there who are getting like three or four hundred people, yeah, and they're charging twenty or thirty quid to do a Zoom class, and yeah. you know that's from my humble position taking the Becky and not helping your members. No, absolutely not. That's taking the money and just, you know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, on that positive note. There you go. Well, I think we, I'm sorry it was so long, but playing through Nakoshi, what, yeah. 20 is 20, it? yeah. 10 next time. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we'll do the Dojo Kun one day. There's only six of them. Yeah. It's five. All right. Cheers. <laughs> okay, I'm finished. Oh. Oh. Oh.